Welcome back to Landing Zone Home, and today I have a question for you. What are your feelings about RV quality? If you're an owner or maybe shopping for an RV, what are you thinking you're seeing for quality? Well, that's the question we're going to try to answer today. I performed two surveys, one for Airstream owners and one for all other brand owners, and I'm going to compile the data with over 500 responses, and we're going to look at that and try to draw some conclusions. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because that's where it all comes together. All RV owners were asked these same questions, and I'll go through them one by one. No issues to report, minor issues one service visit, minor issues more than one service visit, major issues more than one service visit, major issues cancel at least one RV trip, and finally, one problem after the other and it still broke. I've taken these and put them into grade ratings, just as if this were a report card, because I feel that it may be a report card on RV quality, at least at my level of expertise. I'm trying to put a little bit of science in this, just so the information is not completely anecdotal, but that's very hard to do. So the ranges from A plus down through grade F. For the Airstream poll, I went to a Facebook group called Airstream Addicts, and it currently has a little over 53,000 members. So that's the exposure the questions had. And as we look at their results, we can see that uh, minor warranty issues corrected with one service visit tops everything else. And then it goes right on down from there. I'm gonna put these in a graphic here in a few moments so you can look at those and we'll get a better feel of what the different ratios are between these categories. As soon as I posted this poll, the first two responses about Airstreams was, why isn't there a no issue category? I really had overlooked that and didn't think much about people would be not finding anything, that everything would be perfect, but right away I uh, made those changes so that that category would be available. Some other responses included uh, one here that says an Airstream was bought, used, no issues that they had not been able to fix themselves, nothing major. Then there is a question about how about minor issues that were self-repaired. Well, that still falls in the category of defects or issues in my book. When we're looking at quality, it, I don't think it really matters who fixes the issue. It's still an issue and it's something that has slipped out of the factory and left for either the dealer to take care of, which isn't very likely, since dealers don't spend a lot of time repairing new units before they're sold. They, they wait until the unit is actually sold. And then the last thing is, as in the case here with this gentleman, they, he did the repairs himself. And part of the advantage of doing the repair yourself, as the next respondent said, is that it is much quicker if you can do it yourself. So when you do take it into the shop, we all realize there's gonna be a wait. We just don't know how long that wait's going to be. And then the next posting is something that is a very interesting when the person says, well, how about uh, the number of days that you actually use your unit? That if you are full time, you're in it quite a bit and then if you're in it just uh, weekends or periodic trips here and there, you're not using it as much, so things may not break as easily. The Airstream report card for the 238 owners that responded stacks up this way, A plus, 61 respondents, meaning that there were no defects or issues found. Grade A was 92 respondents, which is Minor issues corrected with one service call. Then we're going to 60 for grade B, 18 for grade C, 4 
for grade D, which was one or more camping trips had been canceled because of major issues. And then grade F for three respondents, which is one issue after the other and it still broke. Now we're gonna move into all of the brands. Remember, we're gonna do the comparison at the end of the video, so stick around for that. For the all of the brands, I went to a Facebook group called RV Tips, who currently have over 198,000 members and asked the exact same questions that we did to the Airstream owners, same categories, we had quite a few responses, too many to show here, but this really might give you kind of a feel for what I saw. One of the first responses was major repairs at the factory. So in a lot of cases, uh, I hope we all know that going back to the factory can be an option. You can either take it back yourself or maybe work with a dealer and they send it back if it's pretty significant repairs. The next respondent said they had major issues that went back to the dealer multiple times and went back to the manufacturer and ultimately was replaced with a new unit. That's heartbreaking for anyone to have to experience that kind of issue with an RV. Then the response that says, I guess I could have taken it back to the dealership for every little problem. But for him, that would require two 120 mile round trips. So again, if you can fix it yourself, sometimes that's the best thing to do uh, time-wise and even money-wise. But I'm gonna put a plug in right here for mobile RV service. No particular business in mind, just the whole concept of mobile RV service. And many of those folks can come out and do warranty service wherever you're parked, if it's at home or a campsite or something like that. So consider that as an option if it's difficult to get back to the dealer or if the time constraint is gonna be an issue. Then we have a person saying they had several minor issues with the 2020 model. They just can't believe that it left the factory with missing trim. And then on a 2018 model, they found that the entire back wall was not attached to the floor of the coach. They called the manufacturer and they agreed to cover it since it was a major construction defect here. After seeing several responses like this that are uh, pretty negative, I went back trying to find positive responses and, and they just weren't there. Now the numbers are gonna tell a different story Again, so kind of keep that in mind that I'm not cherry picking the responses here at all. I'm using what I have. So now we're going to move in and look at the specific numbers for all other brands and how they stack up there on the grade. So the grade of uh, A+, plus, there was 98 owners that graded it that way out of a total of 313 all other RB brand owners. 25 responded with a grade A. 120 responded with warranty issues requiring more than one service visit. Then we drop down to grade D, which was 11 people responding that one or more RB trips had been canceled due to major issues. And then at grade F, 12 responded saying that one issue after the other and it still broke. So now we've seen the responses for the two individual groups. We're gonna start pulling some of this data together to do comparisons. And we're gonna start off right here comparing the overall uh, grades that the owners assigned there. And side by side, uh, it doesn't show us a whole lot that jumps out other than the D's and F's on all other RV brands kind of stands out. The numbers, keep it in mind, are a little bit different from each one. They're about 115 respondents different. So to try to make this information a little more consumable, let's, let's use that word, a little more consumable, 
I kind of condensed some of these grades to give us a more focused picture. So I took uh, grade A and grade A plus, added those up together, and for all brands that came out to 39% of all respondents, the 313 respondents, chose these two grades together. For Airstream, the two grades together were 64% of all respondents. So this really puts things a little more in perspective, at least in my eyes, seeing that over 50%, actually over 60% of the Airstream people said grade A plus or grade A. And on the other end of the grading spectrum, I took grades D and F, brought them in together. For all brands, that was 7.3% of the recipients graded D or F. And for Airstream, it was 2.9% of owners that graded at the level D or F. That's a pretty significant spread between 7.3 and 2.9. I think that right there is kind of a telling story on uh, either the community that I was focused on or maybe this is actually reflecting some difference in quality. And I tend to think that uh, both are at play here. And then pulling all this together uh, on the consolidation, we can see the graphics here of the uh, grading scales, highest to lowest. And uh, I'm going to let you make your own assumptions there. I think I have some tendency to lean in one direction or the other because I'll to show my bias, I am an Airstream owner, but uh, I'm not going to just assume that that's the case. At any rate, there are defects coming out of the factory. There are defects that are coming off of the sales lot. These, in many cases, should not be happening. You know, water leaks should be zero. But I'd mentioned my niece had just purchased a trailer and it has taken her three, maybe four service calls using a remote service technician to uh, get her water back the way it should have been the day it left the factory. So there's clearly too many issues coming off of the production line, too many issues coming out of the dealership. I'll mention that in the uh, overall poll that I did, it was for 2018 to 2021 models, but if they had a comment on an older model, they could, they could put that there. And I think if you spend any time at all on the internet, you're going to realize that the most respondents to an issue are going to be the negative responses, especially when it comes to quality. Well, that's my take on RV quality and producing the quality report. I hope you found some value in this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell so you get notifications for future videos. And until next time, thanks for watching.